Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to continue talking about why, which nerd math we're picking for each of our fundamental intermediate weight kettlebell exercises. This is part two of this video. In the first one, we kind of gave you a basic overview, but I was pretty sure we were going to need to clarify, and viewers have made some very good comments about how to clarify this idea. So we've been breaking things up into swing, clean, snatch, which are all ballistics, Turkish get up, press, and squat, which are all grinds. Pretty much most things in kettlebells run on some type of volume cycle, and then they progress to some type of density cycle. And there will be heavy, light, density cycles and light cycles to create ongoing waves of training. What we're gonna talk about in this video is the distinction between the swing, the clean, the snatch, and the Turkish get up, press, and squat. The grinds are fundamentally strength training. So in order to make them fundamentally strength training, we have to treat them as such, which means we need defined rest periods. The ballistics, the swing, the clean, and the snatch tend to be EMOMs. We do a work inside of an amount of time. An EMOM gives you a reward for doing these exercises faster and smoother. There is a benefit for efficiency. If you are more efficient at doing those exercises, you get more break period as you go on in your volume cycles. The Turkish getup, the press, and the squat can vary can vary how long each rep takes based on how tired you get. Because they are harder, they are grinds, they tax the body differently at different times. Think about that as a fundamental distinction. EMOM, 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 fixed rest period, fixed rest period, fixed rest period. That is not always true for the Turkish getup. There are five ways to do nerd math for Turkish getup. Off the top of my head, there's probably a lot more. Turkish getup, because each rep takes a long time, 15 to 30 seconds, that falls into a different type of math than the press and the squat, because these reps happen fairly quickly. Our swing and our Turkish getup both operate on kind of their own math, but they operate on EMOMs and fixed rest periods. Our clean and our snatch are basically the same. Our press and our squat are basically the same, or they can be treated the same. Let's also point out that this is addressing only at this point the math for single arm kettlebells. When we get to the math for double arm kettlebells, we'll have to make yet another video. I now realize about that. The swing and the Turkish getup, we tend to try to push into 10 minutes. That's just for efficiency, and that assumes that you can get heavier weights over time. We always have to define our terms when we're deciding what we're doing. There's always another option. If you have access to heavier weights, and you can keep these at 10 minutes for years. If you don't have access to heavier weights, then you'll have to get more elaborate and push your time greater than 10 minutes. Our clean and our snatch usually run from six minutes to 20 minutes for our volume cycles. We add volume in order to keep our intensity the same. We want there to be a reward for being more efficient at these exercises. Five and five snatches should take you about 20, 25 seconds. So you should set it down and have a 35 second break. Five seconds, two and a half seconds, set it down, stand up. Two and a half seconds, get back down to get back into position. We're trying to hold a 30 second break period. Cleans are a little bit faster depending on how heavy it is, but not much. They're kind of generally pretty much the same within maybe 10% of each other. The press and the squat, if you're operating just pure presses, which I rarely do, but it is a thing that people train quite a bit, presses and squats are fundamentally the same. I rarely do pure presses on their own if people can do a clean. The benefit of doing a clean and press together is greater than the benefit of just doing presses alone. But there are a lot of strength guys or people with movement limitations who will get into doing just presses for volume cycles. Our press and our squat. I like a very fixed break period of one minute in between sets. So you would do three to five reps based on which number you had picked for the press and for the single arm front squat. And then you would set it down the second the kettlebell touches the ground, you hit a button, you get a one minute break, and then you go with that. The fixed break period is what we're looking for with the press and the squat. That's once again, how we are controlling our intensity. But we need a longer break period because they are grinds 
than we need for the ballistics. The goal of the snatch is to take six minutes, add volume cycles, get to 20 minutes. We get our 100 reps on each side. Then we collapse it down through a density cycle to get back to a 10 minutes of training. There are more elaborate, much longer ways to do all of this, but I am assuming at the outset in our engineering equation that people are using intermediate weights in a more of a home environment instead of a professional athletic environment. If you have a professional athletic environment, all of this can change. All of this can change. It's always your engineering equation. What do you have? How much time do you have? And then how are we going to progress? We always want to progress in a defined way. This is very different than say a CrossFit strategy where you're doing something different every day. CrossFit has something similar to this, but they do it for their fundamentals of barbell, their deadlift, either their back squat, their front squat, their press. And then they might have cycles where they work in their Olympic lifting, which takes their grinds and turns them into ballistics. A user pointed out that barbell Olympic lifting is ballistics. And yes, that is true. In the previous video, I referenced gym training. You're not allowed to do Olympic lifting in almost any gym you go to. Almost any gym you go to, unless it's a CrossFit specific gym or an Olympic lifting gym. So. There are exceptions to everything, and that's why we say that there are exceptions to everything. So the distinction that we wanna make sure is clear is presses and squats have fixed break periods, usually one minute because we're using intermediate weights. If you get above, say, 32K for men and above 20, 24K for women, then the break period gets longer. It becomes essentially pure strength training. If it gets really heavy, it gets to three to five minutes in between sets, and the math changes drastically. Think about everything we're doing here as volume cycles because we are trying to get experience points. Think of this like a video game. You have to do so many reps in order to get your biomechanical alignment correct so you don't kill yourself or die. If you haven't done enough reps and you try to jack it up to a 48K and you try to pull a clean, you're probably gonna really hurt yourself unless you're already an extremely well-trained athlete. We are doing volume cycles in the most predictable ways possible because we are trying to gain athletic experience so we don't die later on when we try to do something a bit more ridiculous, Olympic lifting, circus art, hand balancing, dirt biking, downhill skiing, the Mongolian Derby. The swing and the Turkish getup are always our fundamentals and we can discuss these things in more depth, longer programs or shorter programs if you want to. Right now we're limiting these to 10 minutes to try to get people to do them. If I tell people to do swings for 30 minutes, people just aren't gonna do them. Not even most professional athletes want to do swings for 30 minutes. We try to limit this. This is a really fast exercise. Think of this as being 36 reps per minute. It is really fast. It is almost twice as fast as a snatch. Snatch is 60% of a swing speed. 20 minutes of snatches kind of mathematically balances out with 10 minutes of swings. They're not the same. Don't take that as that they're the same thing. They are not the same thing. They have different ranges of motion. You have to do your math for each individual exercise and understand it. Break it down, figure it out, figure out how to not die. This is all about making sure that we don't die.